Okay, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Fred Snorkel asked a very interesting question. Fred says, hey, Jimmy, someone said the other day something about circumcision that I was trying to answer using the King James Bible. She said that the God of the Old Testament and therefore the Bible is not the God of creation due to the fact that he asked some of his followers to circumcise themselves and their children and their slaves. Since he would ask them to mutilate themselves and be rid of his own created foreskin, which she said was an act of horror, this cannot be the real creator. Could you please make a video addressing this? Thanks, and God bless. Well, thank you for that question. And it's very, it is very interesting uh, in the sense that, um, first of all, uh, we read about circumcision in Genesis 17, which happens to be the same book that we read about God creating the heaven and the earth. So it has to be the same God, and it has to be the creator. And for you to say that this is not the same God of who created everything, you're left with no other choice but to say the God of the Bible is wrong. All right, so let's not dwell on that, but, uh, you know, when you don't believe the Bible, what do you believe in, right? So let's examine what circumcision is. Starting in chapter 17, God says, This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you every man child in your generations he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with the money must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Now let's not forget, verse 11, it shall be a token of the covenant. All right, now if we go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy says, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. So there is a, you don't circumcise your heart, right? That's a spiritual circumcision. The circumcision in Genesis 17 is a physical one. What's talked about here in Deuteronomy is a spiritual one. It's very similar to, um, you know, like the sacrifices. Uh, going into the temple and sacrificing the blood of bulls and goats. That's not the real sacrifice. The real sacrifice is the death of Jesus Christ when he offered his body. That's the real sacrifice. And so... The real circumcision is this uh, circumcising your heart and be no more stiff neck, which simply means to put your faith, put your trust in God and not in yourself. All right. And it's uh, and it's it's sort of a conversion. Right. But um, there is a. Uh, here in Philippians 3, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So this is really a matter of uh, you know, knowing God and having faith in God. Do you put your trust in yourself? Are you going to save yourself? Or has God already done the work? Do you put all your faith and trust in God? And so this really stems back to this uh, circumcision that we read about in Genesis 17, which is a token of the covenant, a token of the promise that God has made if, you know, you put your trust in God, then he, then, you know, uh, then he is uh, watching over you. And um, so... We read about uh, circumcision, you know, uh, quite f throughout the whole Bible. But I want to uh, point out a couple of things here 
like with Paul, Paul says, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. All right, and, uh, you know, I, there are so many examples of um, this, uh, you know, sort of explanation of, of uh, you know, circumcision. Uh, here in Galatians, I think, is a great one. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith, which works by love. And... In Galatians 6, here, if I remember right. Uh, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. All right. Now, uh, that sort of goes to show, you know, if you, if you read Galatians 6, uh, it could probably explain it way better. Than I ever could, but for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. So uh, there's a the physical circumcision that represents the spiritual circumcision. Uh, I'm not sure that it could be said any simpler than that. Um, well, I hope that sort of answers your question. I, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not so sure that I could make it any more easier to understand that that circumcision of the flesh is symbolic, if you will, of the true circumcision. And we are even, and the circumcision avails nothing. The physical circumcision doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, here, it's interesting here in Titus one. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Now this is obviously, it's not talking about Christians, or believers in God, right? It's talking about the Jews, okay, the Christ-rejecting Jews. And we read about uh, this circumcision here, a warning against them. It's, you know, it's more or less pointing them out. And then also, uh, there's another word that's used also. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, which again is talking about the Jews, the Christ-rejecting Jews. Uh, we get warned over and over again about these people. And so anyways, uh, if there was more, I could add more, but I want to try to keep this as simple. I'm not so sure that I haven't really covered everything. And she said it was an act of horror. Well, the circumcision really is a, it's arguably a, you know, uh, matter of uh, hygiene, if you will, uh, to keep everything clean. But I think its intent back in Genesis 17 was to make a distinction between the children of God and the, and the children of and the other children, right, and the other people, to make one people sort of stand out over the all other people, right? And so that's true even today. We Christians stand out over all the other people. We are different. We are special. We are royalty. We are a peculiar nation, right? And uh, let's see, what is that, First Peter 2? I believe uh, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, okay, that you shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we stand out among all other people. And that was the intent of the circumcision in, Gen in Genesis 17, to sort of make a distinction, a difference between uh, the people of God and the other people. And it was done in a physical way, but it's meant to represent a spiritual way. And that spiritual way is Jesus Christ. And I hope you all 
preaching the Word of God, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, and uh, have a good day. Thank you.